Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video we continue the Windows Privilege Escalation series and specifically we will show a really important exploitation technique which has to do with abusing the C impersonate privilege. So the basic idea is that most of the times if you have this privilege then you are able to obtain a system administrator shell which is a really important technique. So we're going to talk about Windows Setup, the privilege itself, how to exploit it, and then I will leave some reference in the description down below, and I will show practical exploitation with a Windows machine, so a virtual Windows 11 machine. We're going to exploit it there. So I hope the video is interesting and useful. If it was so, please leave some feedback, subscribe to the channel, and just let me know what you think of it. So we can start with respect to the Windows setup. So we're going to assume that we have a user, which is a really basic user. However, we are going to assign to that user the say impersonate privilege. So for example, in this machine, in this Windows machine right now, I'm actually logged in as the quick demo user, which is an administrator, because if I do who am I all, I get all the privileges and notice that here I have Actually, here I do not have a lot of privileges because I'm executing this shell with mandatory level medium. So it's like it's limited with respect to what I can do. However, I can simply click on it and I think I can just say terminal run as administrator. So I'm going to give it the maximum integrity level. And now if I do it again, here I have all the privileges and notice that I just, I just belong if I say net user quick camo. I just, I belong to the group administrator. So that's it. However, I've created other users and in particular I have the Leonardo user. And if I check Leonardo, net user Leonardo, this user is just a normal user. It doesn't belong to any specific groups, just to the user groups. However, he does have the same personality privilege because I edited the group policy. So if you want to assign the same personality privilege to any user, you can go as follows. You can go into the window system, then you say edit group policy. So this one, and then here you just open this up a little bit. You go into window settings, then into security settings, then into local policies, then into user rights assignment. And this opens up the following thing where we have the policy and the security setting, which means to which like users and groups this policy is applied. The policy we are interested in starts with the I. So we go here, impersonate a client after authentication. This is the say impersonate privilege. So we go here, we go into properties and notice here that I have added, I, I did add user or group. I write Leonardo, I do write check names and I write okay. So I already done this, as you can see here, Leonardo. So this policy is already applied to Leonardo. And if we just log in as that user, so I log in as Leonardo, we will see essentially, so here I put the password, we will see that uh, if I open a shell, I will get the same personality privilege. So here I am in, in the system, then I say console, I think, or terminal. Actually, let's do terminal. Let's do terminal, then I say run as administrator. Then I put the password of my account. And here I have a PowerShell. And then if I say who am I, who am I priv, notice that I have the say impersonate privilege enabled. So here I have this netcat, but I'm going to remove it because we don't need it for now. So essentially this is the setup. We must start with this account. And by starting from this account, we are able to exploit this to obtain um, essentially administrator uh, shell. Look, because right now we don't have an administrator shell. So what's the idea? Well, the idea is that this say impersonate privilege is also called the long name impersonate a client after authentication. It is a right to a user to a service account typically that is assigned, for example, to the web server account or to the database service account. And essentially it allows you to, to have a program that runs on behalf of the user that authenticated to you in order to impersonate a client. So essentially the idea is that we have a service. This service of course accepts clients, accepts uh, uh, like users essentially. And of course, before the user is able to interact with the service, uh, user service, uh, there must happen some sort of authentication, some sort of like auth proce procedure. And typically in this auth, uh, the user gives his passwords and authenticates. 
So the idea is that with this particular privilege, if the service that runs, uh, the, if the, the process that runs the service has this particular privilege, what it can do is, after user authentication, it can impersonate these users. That is, it can access the token to, of that user, and therefore it can acts uh, with the user of the same privilege, sort of like he can borrow the privileges from that particular user. And this is how it's used maliciously. An attacker with the same personal privilege can create a service, mislead a client into connecting to that service, and then impersonate the that computer to elevate the attacker's level of access to that, to that uh, device, essentially. Now, if you're interested more in the details of how all of this works under the hood, he I prepared a bunch of references that I suggest you to read. In particular, there's this article, Fox Glover Security, which represents sort of like the introduction of this, uh, of this privilege escalation technique from what I can un remember and understand. And this dates back to September 2016. If, if there was something earlier, please tell me. But essentially in this article, they go through all of the detail that makes this work. But essentially the idea is that you force a privileged user to connect to your service and then you steal their token. So that's the general idea. If you want more in-depth, maybe in the future I can do more in-depth video, but the objective of this video is not to go in-depth under the hood, rather is to understand how to exploit this. Because when you're doing, for example, the OSCP exam or other machines and you find a user with this privilege, then the exploitation part is quite easy. So you should just learn how to do it and then how it works under the hood. And so now we can talk about the exploitation. So assume that I have this privilege. Assume that when I do who am I priv, I have this say impersonate privilege. What can I do to exploit it? What can I do to obtain an administrator shell? So there are actually many exploits that you can use to exploit this thing, this privilege. In particular for SCP, I just use the following two, print spoofer and god potato. Sometimes the print spoofer exploit worked, other times I had to use the god potato. Now god potato refers to a specific class of exploits called juicy potato and then it like changed name throughout the years. But the idea is that god potato is one of the latest advancement of this change of, uh, of exploits, of this type of exploits I would say. So you can either do this, you can use these two exploits, they work for me for the OSCP exam, so I think they will be fine essentially. Now in all cases, however, we first have to do some setup. So in our local machine, we have to set up a local listener. So there's not much to it, we just write an end cut and boom, we have our local listener. The next step instead is to download netcat in the remote machine. So the local listener we have to set up on our attacker machine because we want to do a reverse shell and then we want to download netcat, the binary version of netcat into the Windows machine we want to attack. I showed how to do this in the previous video on the reverse shells in Windows but here essentially is the command we use IWR in PowerShell. So we go into our shell here with user Leonardo, we go into the desktop, let's say, and then here we can just put the command. We put the command, we download it, and here we have our binary, netcat binary, perfect. Now, how do we use the various exploits? So here I show how to use the sprint poofer, the got potato net 2, the got potato net 4, and the got potato net 35. Now notice that, for the print spoofer, there is a single exploit that, however, you can download for both the 32 version and the 64 version. This is like with respect to the architecture of your processor. If you're running in 32 bit or in 64 bit, and specifically 64 is also called x64, and this is x86, yeah, 32 bit version. How do you know which version you're running? You can do a system info and it gives you information about your processor and among this information you find if it's 32 or 64. In this case what we see here we see x64 so this is a 64-bit processor. Nowadays most processors are 64, the ones that were built somewhat recently, so typically you want to do a 64. So we can download the exploit, it's really simple, we can download the exploit and then after we download our print spoofer to test it out, we can call it like this. So we do print spoofer dash C and here we put the like the argument that we want to be executed. So in this case actually it's not in C temp netcat, 
but it is in C users Leonardo desktop nc64.exe. Here we put the IP address we want to connect to. In this case, it is not this one, but it is 12168, I think 1221, because this is the network interface that the machine is running on. If I do an IP config, IP config all, here I get the network interface, it's 12168122, and then dot one here. And then here I put the port that I'm listening on, 5555-ECMD to execute the CMD command. And then here too, if I do this, I think it's not going to execute because it doesn't um, understand the binary essentially. So like if I do this, can I give me an error? Maybe yes. And instead what I have to do is I have to do dot backslash. So I have to do dot backslash to say the binary in this particular directory. So I execute this, not notice that nothing is happening. So here I'm not receiving a shell. Why this is the case? Because sometimes these exploits do not work. So this is why I'm not only showing you print spoofer, but I'm showing you other exploit such as the God Potato one. So since the print spoofer exploit did not work, let's try with the three God Potato version. And notice here that I have net2, net4, and net35, net3.5, because these are the different version of .NET. So technically, if you want them to be ordered, we would we would just put like first dot, dot net two, then 3.5 and then the four version. So that's the idea. We have different version for different dot net version. So let's start with the two, the earliest one, the oldest one. We download the exploit. Of course, if you download the ex this exploit with the antivirus turned on, with the active protection, with the active scan going on, Windows will recognize this because we did not apply any obfuscation and packing strategies. So it is clear and it is able to understand it is malicious. And then we can execute it as follows. So we put the name of the executable dash CMD. And here we want to put the program we want to execute. And this program simply starts a reverse shell. So we executed it and it says, look, you need to install the .NET version. And of course, we don't need this because we cannot install this on a malicious, on a victim target. So it means that we, we don't, like we cannot, we don't have this .NET version. So we cannot use this. However, there are others like 3.5. We can try with the 3.5. We can just download it and we execute it the same, essentially. So let's execute it. Once again, it requires us to, to like download the .NET uh, framework, which means that we don't have this version. And we have the .NET 4. So we downloaded it. We executed it. And notice now this time it's not asking us for downloading anything. And it actually spawned a shell here down. It did a bunch of stuff. And now this current user NT authority system. And indeed, the new shell that we have just spawned, if I say who am I priv, I am all of these privileges because who am I is NT authority system. So essentially, I was able to spawn a shell as administrator of the machine. I'm in all this group. This is my SID and I have all these privileges. So at this point, I can go into the administrator. Typically, for example, in OSCP, you go into user, administrator, desktop, and here, actually, I don't even think there is an administrator user here. The administrator is the quick ammo, so there's just quick ammo. You go into its desktop, and in the administrator desktop, which in my case is the quick ammo, you can find the flag of the user and do the machine, or of course, in a real assessment, now you are able to execute code as administrator. You can enumerate much more the surface attack. You can extract critical assets, and you can put all this stuff into your penetration testing report. So essentially, this is the idea. And uh, it worked after a bunch of tries because we have the .NET 4 version here, apparently. So this one triggered the exploit, the previous one did not. So the idea for exploiting the same person privilege is pretty easy. You go into the machine, you do a UMI priv, you check that you have this privilege and that it is enabled. And here I also show how to set it up by going into the edit group policy. And you just follow this bunch of UIs and then you add uh, this privilege to your user. So if you have this pri privilege, then you can exploit it. There are many different exploits going on in the internet. I suggest the following four, essentially. One is the print spoofer. 
you just download the binary and you execute it as follows of course remember to change the path where you have the end cut the ip and the port and then you have three versions of god potato depending on the dotnet framework that is installed on the server on the victim that you're trying to attack so we have version 2 3.5 and version 4 for each version you just download the exploit and you execute it it's pretty simple you just try uh, the virus exploit until you get the one working or maybe you can enumerate the system better to understand which version of the framework you're running on and actually if you don't want to try to download all these uh, virus binaries the .NET 2 3.5 and 4 to quickly go to the version that you installed you can execute this command reg query with this h key local key which queries the local registry of windows and it tells you the like net framework installed the version of the dotnet framework that you installed in your system notice for example in this case i have the version 4 which means that by executing the net 4 this one that got put it on net 4 i'm able to obtain code execution so i'm just gonna take this and i'm gonna put it in the notes like to understand understand the version of dot net with the following command and then and and use the according the um, relative exploit so the exploit here depends on the specific version of the dotnet framework which can be 2 3.5 or 4 and to finish off here are all the references that i used to prepare for this video with the relative github for the exploit i thank all the authors for it and that's it i hope the video was interesting and enjoyable if it was so please leave some feedbacks in the comment subscribe to the channel for more content and keep following for the continuation of this series